Hello and welcome back to our series on scaling large React applications. Today we are talking about component design systems and theming. And this is very important for building scalable user interfaces across big teams and multi-brand platforms. And if you want to reduce UI inconsistencies, speed up development, and empower your design and engineering teams to collaborate, then this episode is for you. So why design systems matter at scale? They can be a single source of truth for the design, for the UI components, styles, and interaction patterns. They enable reusability, so the teams do not invent a new buttons every time. Design systems help us to save time, improve quality, and promote brand consistency. And of course, they help to onboard the new developers and designers faster with clear guidelines and shared tools. And without a good design system, you will end up with inconsistent UI, countless of different styles, and frustration. A design system in React is essentially just a library of components built for reuse and consistency. But building one at scale involves more than just creating a couple of buttons and inputs. There are a few key properties of scalable design systems, and let's talk about each of them. First, atomic design principles. Break down your interfaces into atoms, such as buttons and inputs, or molecules, like form groups or navigation items, organisms like header or model, layouts, for example, like a page layouts, and pages itself. Another principle is single responsibility and composition. Each component should do only one thing and compose nicely with others. And of course, accessibility should come first. Every component should meet accessibility standards, so use area roles, keyboard navigation, and right contrast. Components should be well documented and demonstrated in tools like Storybook, making it easy for teams to explore and use. And design systems at scale should have theming support. It's needed to change the branding and color schemes without rewriting all the styles and duplicating code. Now let's talk about folder structure and code organization for design systems. Your design system should live separately from your app code, typically as its own package or workspace in your monorepo, or it could even be a separate repo, depends on your preferences. You can structure it horizontally, just a folder per component, or you can follow the atomic design and create folders for atoms, molecules, organisms, and etc. So here is an example folder structure. This model organization, aligned with the atomic design principles, make it easier for developers to navigate your code base. Now let's talk about theming in scalable front-end applications. Theming lets you to customize colors, fonts, and other style elements per customer, brand, or even the mode, like light or dark, for example, without rewriting your components. And there are a few common theming strategies, and one of them is CSS variables. You can expose colors, font sizes, spacing, and other custom CSS properties. And the dynamic switching is easy, you don't even need React for that, you can just use a pure JavaScript. Another option is styled components, or CSS in JS. You just use a theme provider to inject the style values into your style components or CSS in JS. And the next one is design tokens. This is especially useful if you want to keep in sync your design team and engineering. You define your design values into a centralized uh, file like a JSON or YAML, and then you generate the platform-specific tokens for your web or native applications and you can inject them into the build time or runtime via API, it's up to you. And a good design system also should have a multi-theme support. Allow switching the themes into runtime using context or hooks. You can store the theme preference locally or in the user settings. And if you want to know more about using the React context for that, then watch this video where I'm talking about it and other state management options. And sometimes you want to have not just the global theming, but also per component one. For example, if you have a dashboard and you want to change the theme for each individual widget. So that's good if your design system can support that as well. 
Now let's talk about accessibility. This is a legal and ethical requirement. And the best practices for accessibility are the following. Use semantic elements, not just buttons and links, but also headers, footers, nav, main, section, and all the headings should be in place as well. Add area roles for your components. You should also test with the screen readers regularly and probably integrate the accessibility linting into your CI CD pipeline. And it is very helpful for developers, especially the new ones, if you have uh, documentation around accessibility and clear guidelines to follow. And what is the best tooling to build and maintain your design system? The most popular tool is Storybook. You can use it as an interactive UI explorer with documentations, prop tables, and even tests. You can also automate the visual regression testing with tools like Percy, in addition to unit tests, to catch unexpected UI changes. And it's worth implementing linting and conventions just to make sure your code is consistent. And of course, use TypeScript to type your components' properties. You should also set up your CI CD pipelines to build, test, deploy, and publish your design system packages to your NPM registry or any other artifact storage you use. And now we are coming to the end of this video, and I want just to go over the common best practices and pitfalls when it comes to the building design systems. So let's start with the best practices. Keep your components small and composable. Enforce strict API rules and public interfaces and invest in the documentation that reflects the real-life usage and examples. Prioritize performance. Avoid deeply nested or overstyled components and use design tokens with meaningful names for the colors, spacing, and other variables. And the things you definitely should not do are overloading your component with all the different props and variants, better keep it simple, duplicating the styles in the different parts of the app, Things should not repeat themselves and your design system built for this purpose. Lack of the accessibility consideration, as I already mentioned, and neglecting maintenance. Design systems tend to turn into a monster if you do not clean it up and refactor on time. And of course, align your engineering team and design team early on to avoid all the misunderstandings. And if you find this video useful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for my channel. Stay tuned, because in the next video we are going to talk about React performance, thing that is often neglected by big teams and very important for the user experience. And if you don't want to miss it, hit the bell button to subscribe for notifications. Thanks for watching and see you soon!